I've decided to gather some of the biggest Pokemon hot takes I could find on the internet and give my thoughts on them. Now I've already done a video on my personal Pokemon hot takes before, but now I wanted to take a look at what apparently a lot of people are thinking about the Pokemon franchise and see if I agree with them at all. So here are some of the biggest Pokemon hot takes that I could find about Pokemon. I like Raichu more than Pikachu. Definitely not the biggest hot take. But given Pikachu's status and the amount of exposure it gets, it's easy to see why people could think this. Personally, I think I'd say I like Raichu more than Pikachu. It has one of the best Alolan forms in the game, which just makes Raichu's case even clearer. One hot take that I do disagree heavily with though is that Pikachu is overrated because it gets too much exposure, etc. Pikachu is the mascot. Of course it's going to get more exposure than any other Pokemon. It'd be weird if it didn't. There is a case for Charizard being overrated because of the amount of exposure it gets, but not Pikachu. Pikachu is a very special case. If it wasn't for Pikachu, there's a chance that the Pokemon franchise wouldn't be as big as it is today. So no, Pikachu is not overrated. Raichu may be cooler, but Pikachu also deserves all the love it gets. All the Pokemon stats should be adjusted for power creep. Pokemon isn't really known for having patch notes. The only time major changes are made to Pokemon, in terms of changing their stats, and sometimes move balls or even abilities, is mostly between generations. In my opinion, they shouldn't really make any Pokemon worse, but they should definitely make some Pokemon more useful. I can see it being difficult to adjust Pokemon stats with a straight out patch, especially their HP, as if the Pokemon is adjusted in one game, it would also have to be adjusted in whichever games that you can trade to. For example, if a Pokemon from X and Y had completely different stats in Emerga Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, that would probably be a bit of a hassle to trade between them and have things change. Having said all this, I do agree Pokemon that have been weak for a long period of time should get some sort of buff. They managed to fix a lot of pretty terrible Pokemon, one example being Pelipper, going from pretty useless in battle to extremely good, all thanks to getting the Drizzle ability. I'd love to see other terrible Pokemon like Mightyana or Sunflora get something to help them out. Whether it be better stats, a new form or evolution, there's a really great video by Corey Gaming talking about why characters from fighting games should be buffed more than nerfed, and I think this also applies to Pokemon. Instead of making newer Pokemon worse, make older Pokemon better. Fighting 3 plus trainers back to back is boring and annoying, just give me one trainer with 6 Pokemon. I see where they're coming from. It can definitely be annoying to have to fight multiple trainers in a row, especially when you have no break in between. The best example I can think of is the Family House and Hoenn. On the other end, having to fight multiple trainers in a row, not only do you usually always have a break in between, but situations where you have to fight multiple trainers are usually saved for routes that are somewhat long. If for example there's a long route that only has one trainer with six Pokemon, after you beat the trainer, the rest of the route would be pretty boring. Sure, there might be some Pokemon to interact with or items to spot, but I think I would much prefer trainers that are spaced out than just one single trainer with a lot of Pokemon. I also don't think it's the best idea to always fight trainers with full teams. There's a good reason why the majority of NPC fights in Pokemon, you don't really see them with full teams of six. A lot of the times they can lead to long repetitive battles, especially in the early stages of the game where the player has their starter and maybe a couple of other Pokemon they caught. Having to fight multiple people also means that buffs and hazards that you set up are removed from each battle. I think it would be pretty boring in every battle you just set up Sword Stance and then one shot every Pokemon the opponent has. I don't really see much fun of that if it's happening every single time if I'm being honest. So personally, I don't really see a problem with having to fight multiple trainers, as long as, again, we get to take some sort of break in between. Even with the Elite Four, sure we can't go back and heal our Pokemon, but most of the time we get to stop and use items to prepare for the next battle. One example of a Pokemon trainer with a full team of six that I can think of is the trainer with six Magikarps, and that battle is really boring. I know it's a gimmick battle, but if every trainer battle is like this, I think I get tired of it pretty quickly. The EXP share is great. I absolutely agree that the EXP share can be very useful, and it makes farming and leveling up Pokemon a lot less tedious, since doing it one at a time wasn't the most fun thing. I also 100% believe it should be a toggle option, where players can choose to have it on or not. 
there is absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be able to turn it off. I don't agree with people saying that it should be removed from the game, but it really should have a toggle option where we can choose to have it on or off. If people want an easier playthrough, let them have an easier playthrough. If they want a more challenging playthrough, let them have that as well. Having a toggle option for the EXP share would almost be like an easy and hard mode for the game. Having the EXP share on all the time can also lead to playthroughs where the player literally just uses one Pokemon and never has to use anything else because the rest of the team are leveling up without having any effort whatsoever. So yes, while I 100% agree EXP share is a great and useful item, we should absolutely have the option to turn it off. And I'm going to be honest, I really don't see a reason why there shouldn't be a toggle option. The Quick Ball. I will defend this Pokeball until the day I die. This is one of the best, most useful Pokeballs in the game and anyone who dislikes it, I challenge you to never use it again. You'll see how annoying it is. When I first played the Scarlet and Violet DLC, one of the first things I did was catch every Pokemon that I didn't have. And to catch those Pokemon, I just used Quick Balls. It was great. No having to waste 5 minutes weakening the Pokemon and hope that it gets caught, I can just throw a Quick Ball and it's done. How in Scarlet and Violet, if a Pokemon breaks out the Quick Ball, you can simply run away, encounter it to throw a Quick Ball again. I promise you, if you are someone who likes to catch a lot of Pokemon, and you stop using Quick Balls, you will notice the difference. Bottom line, Quick Balls are great, and if you think otherwise, you're wrong. Bipedal Pokemon are fine. Now, I'll be the first to admit that a lot of my favourite Pokemon are considered bipedal, or at least kind of close to it. It's overall subjective as to whether or not you're a fan of these Pokemon. I will, however, say that Game Freak clearly are making way more of them than before, most likely to make them more relatable to people by making them more humanoid. If we compare the first couple set of starters to starters today, while some of them do stand up, they are still very clearly more animal-like than human-like. Some of the more recent starters have clearly very humanoid-looking features, with some of them suspiciously looking like they could just be people in a costume. I'm overall fine with having humanoid and bipedal Pokemon, of course, but at the same time I do get people who don't like them, and would much rather have more animalistic-looking Pokemon. Black Shinies are getting boring and are overdone. I am kind of inclined to agree, only because there are so many of them at this point. Don't get me wrong, I love a good Black Shiny. Hell, some of my favourite Shiny Pokemon have Black Shinies, but I think Black Shinies would be a lot cooler overall if there were less of them. The best example of this I can think of is with Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre. I have never really been a fan of these Shinies, because we already have an amazing Black Shiny in Rayquaza. Why are we making the other two legends Black Shinies as well? It just makes Rayquaza's Shiny feel a lot less special. And, to quote Syndrome, if all the Shinies are black, then what's the point? I would much rather take Groudon's regular Snot Green Shiny over the black one. I also kind of feel the same way about the Tapus. Do their Shinies look cool? Absolutely. But why do they all look the same? Yeah, they have some other colours going on, but at the same time they're all just black Shinies at the end of the day. Just feels kind of boring. Like, I would much prefer it if they were all their own different colours. You know why Mega Latios and Latias Shinies suck? Because they're both the same. Yes, the Tapu Shinies have a bit more going for them, and, well, I mean, they look way better in general. But it is a similar problem, in my opinion. If we look at the Gen 9 Shinies, Coridon is very clearly one of the best ones. And it's a black shiny. Not just because the majority of Gen 9 Shinies are pretty bad, but I truly believe that Coridon Shiny stands out because there really aren't many Black Shinies in this generation. Like, if Moraidon Shiny was also Black, I honestly think there's a chance that I would like Coridon Shiny less. It would definitely feel less special anyway. It's also the reason why most of the future Paradox Pokémon have really boring Shinies overall. They're all just the same chrome colour. Sure, it might make sense, but it's boring. Now, some of them do pull off this chrome look way better than others. Shiny Iron Thorns is forever going to be an amazing Shiny but some of them really don't suit the chrome look at all. And again, having all of them chrome, I would just much rather them have their own unique colours. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, black shinies are still very cool for the most part, I just don't want us to overdo them. Each new Pokemon generation should be gen-locked, like how black and white one was in the beginning. While I don't agree with past generation Pokemon not being available in the game, that's just silly. 
I do like the idea of only being able to find new Pokémon at first, and then being able to find older Pokémon later. It means that players have to use and experience newer Pokémon, rather than just use the same Pokémon they have done for years. I'm someone who always likes to make sure my team, for a new generation, is full of new Pokémon. Even in Legends Arceus, my team was all Pokémon introduced in that game. I remember years ago, when X and Y first came out, seeing a YouTuber doing a playthrough of their game, and during their playthrough, they caught both a Fletchling and a Pidgey. And in the end, they decided to go with Pidgey. Now unless the Pidgey line is your all-time favourite, I think we can all agree this is pretty boring. Obviously, again, use what Pokémon you want, but if I'm playing through a brand new generation, and I have to pick between using the brand new regional bird or a Pidgey, of course I want to experience the new regional bird. Everyone knows how Pidgey is. Why would you not want to experience something new? Now there are some exceptions to this, like the Legends game, where there aren't really enough new Pokémon to justify only new Mons. I mean, it is possible, but it still wasn't as big as a new generation of Pokémon introduces. Especially when the game takes place in an older version of an already existing region, in Legends Arceus case, where the majority of Pokémon are Sinnoh. Another exception to this would be Black and White 2. Even though I do really like Unova having Gen 5 Mons only at the beginning of Black and White 1, it was really nice seeing Pokémon that weren't exclusive to Unova in the sequel. We already played through Unova with Gen 5 only Pokémon, now we get to experience Unova again with some more variety. 99% of fan ideas are pretty awful. I'm inclined to actually disagree with this one. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of terrible fan ideas. I've heard of people suggest stuff like fusing the trainers with the Pokémon, kind of like Digimon style, making evolutions that have two types, a lot of basically garbage. However, there are also a lot of great fan ideas, so much so that a good chunk of them have made it into fan games, or even non-Pokemon games. So what I'm saying is, 99% of fan ideas are bad, not at all. It's closer to 96% if we're being honest. We don't need another type. Very true. We don't need another Pokemon type. We also don't need a new generation of Pokemon. We don't need another Pokemon game. We don't need new Pokemon. We don't need new Pokemon forms, new Pokemon anime, new Pokemon plushes, new Pokemon events. We don't need any of that. Hell, we don't need Pokemon to keep making games in general. If Pokemon decided to stop right now, we'd all be fine. So no, we don't need a new Pokemon type. But would it be nice to have another one? Yes, it would be pretty cool. They're not running out of ideas. Absolutely correct. Pokemon makes a new generation about every three years or so, and they're still going strong. Are a lot of their ideas and creations unoriginal? Sure. The main formula of Pokemon hasn't really changed much, outside of some exceptions. They have, however, done a lot of experimenting with different ways to battle, new gimmicks, new Pokemon themselves, most of which are pretty cool and creative. Yes, you do have some stinkers, but it's pretty subjective as to which ones are good and which ones suck. And the fact that we're still getting around 100 unique looking creatures every few years or so, you've got to hand it to them. So, no, Pokemon aren't running out of ideas. It's just that some of their ideas aren't as good as others. Gen 6 has the best engine. Uh, I don't know if I completely agree with the best engine overall, but Gen 6 definitely did a lot of great things. The PSS is arguably the best online feature in a Pokemon game that Pokemon definitely aren't continuing to make worse versions of. We had a cool new movement feature in the form of roller skates. They were pretty slippery at times, but still cool. Hell, this was the first generation where we could properly breed for competitive Pokemon, and despite Pokemon continuing to make breeding easier every generation, people still don't do it. This is the gen we got proper character customization, even if it was limited. So while the Gen 6 engine might not be the absolute best, you could argue it had a lot of the biggest steps forward in terms of how Pokemon games are today. Catching them all is an unpleasant chore. I mean, yes, it can feel grindy to continuously catch different Pokemon, especially since now there are a lot of them, but that's kind of the point. Not only is it optional to catch them all, but it's also something that you get rewarded for if you choose to do so with a shiny charm. Whether you think it's worth it or not is up to you, but again, it's completely optional. If this was something that was required to do to progress the game, then yes, I could see it being a problem. But when a piece of content in a game isn't required for the player to progress, 
and it's something more for the player to do whenever they want. I don't really see that being a downside in a game. It's kind of like the Korok Seas in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. There are 900 or a thousand of these guys scattered all over the game's massive world. I collected them all once in Breath of the Wild. I did not want to do it again in Tears of the Kingdom, because it's one of the single grindiest things to do in a video game. Did it take away from my experience of the game overall? No, because again, you don't have to do it. Just like catching all the Pokemon. There are a lot of people that really love collecting them all, so as long as something is optional, I really don't see it being a problem. And those are some of the biggest hot takes that I could find about Pokemon. A lot of them made for some interesting discussion. These also weren't the only hot takes that I found, so maybe in the future I'll talk about some more. And if that's something you would want to see, please do leave a like as it does help the video out, subscribe for more Pokemon videos in the future, and until next time, thank you so much for watching.